um, our community and, and our congregation. Um, our hearts continue to be heavy and, and sad, and, but it's also the, the fourth Sunday of Advent. It's also a, a Sunday of, of, of celebration. It's a, the, the Sunday before Christmas, uh, a time of, of celebration and, and hope in the face of, of darkness and, and chaos. And I don't mean to, to be disrespectful of kind of the, the grief that, and the heaviness of heart that we're feeling, but I want to ask you to try and shift gears at this point. And let's, um, let's think about the, the Christmas story. And um, actually, we've got the Christmas story told to us by, um, by some of the children from our church. Well, I think you got the gist of the story there. But, um, well, <clears throat> during this, this Advent season, we've been talking about unwrapping uh, the, the true meaning of Christmas. What's it really all about? And so on the, the first Sunday of Advent, we, we unwrapped a, a white elephant gift. You know, we were reminded that uh, we may feel useless and, and unwanted, but, uh, but in God's eyes, we're of immeasurable value. Then on the, the second week of Advent, uh, we, we unwrapped a, a gift that, um, I can't remember, oh, it was the, the dog biscuits, the dog biscuits on, on the, the second week, and, and we, we talked about you know, waiting, you know, how uh, Advent is, is a time of preparation, and in that time of preparation, we, we need to wait. And then uh, last week, Pastor Kelly opened a, a, a box of Band-Aids. And uh, you know, we, we talked about how it is that Jesus binds up our, our wounds and, and in our brokenness, you know, he can, can bring healing even in the midst of adversity. Well, um, we've got one more package this morning. So we'll see what, uh, what we've got today. And today, we have a mirror. So um, can you think of any... Um, Maybe famous mirrors in, uh, in stories over the years. Can, can you think of um, maybe Snow White? You know, and in Snow White, the, the mirror that uh, the, the wicked witch would look into and say, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? Um, 
Harry Potter. Uh, any Harry Potter fans out here? So, um, what, what was the what, what was the the mirror called in Harry Potter? Okay, <laughs> what, whatever you say. But uh, in in that, the, they would stand in front of the mirror, and and the mirror would um, would would reflect what it is was their their most deepest want, and, and in the case of Harry Potter. You know, it was an issue that he wanted to be reunited with his parents who, who had died when, when, when he was young. Um, when we look into a mirror, what do we see? You know, well, we, we see ourselves. But when we, when we see ourselves in the mirror, do, do we think, oh, look how beautiful I am? Or do we normally look in the mirror and say, oh, how could I have gotten that old? You know, where, where did those wrinkles come from? Where did that gray hair come from? Or is that really another zit that's coming out? <laughs> you know, what is it that, that you see when, when you, you look in a mirror? Oftentimes when we look in the mirror, it becomes a, a reason for, uh, for self-criticism. Sometimes there's a a normal mirror on one side and, and then a, a, a magnifying mirror on the, the other side. And that, that magnifying mirror just you know, sometimes will, will distort things, but the, the problems we see, that, that magnifying just makes it look even, even worse. Wouldn't it be neat if um, when we looked in a mirror, we only saw good things? You know, maybe, wouldn't it be neat if we could look in the mirror and, and see the good things about who it is that God's created us to be? We could look in the mirror and, and see the, the gifts that, that God has, has given to us. You know, maybe seeing what, what lies ahead, not from the standpoint of a, of a crystal ball, but, but just being able to see that even when we're facing adversity, that, that um, there's light at the end of the tunnel, that, that there's, there's something good that, that's going to, to come out of even the, the adversity that, um, that, that we're facing. You know, Mary was just a, a girl that lived in Nazareth. She grew up in a home that, that struggled to, to get by. They didn't have wealth. They didn't have um, high standing in, in the community. And one day a, an angel shows up and, and tells Mary that, um, that, that she's been chosen. She's been chosen to, to bear God's son. And you know, as the angel is telling Mary uh, about how it is that, that she's been chosen, you know, Mary's willing, but you know, she doesn't really believe it. You know, it's like, well, no, you, you must have the wrong person. You know, God would never use me. You know, I'm, I'm not good enough for, or there, there's all sorts of reasons why God would never choose to, to use me. And as the angel sensed her reluctance, the, the angel said to, to Mary, well, I'll, I'll give you proof that what I'm telling you is true. It said, your relative Elizabeth, who is old and beyond childbearing years, she is in her sixth month of pregnancy. And so when you go and see that, uh, that Elizabeth is pregnant, you, know, you will, will uh, see that what I'm telling you really is, is true. You know, Mary agrees to be used by God, even though her life would be turned upside down. She'd have to tell Joseph. She would have to tell her, her parents, certainly your know, word would get around in the community and there would be public disgrace. Mary asked her, herself a question. Why would God ever choose me? You know, when Moses was standing at the burning bush and, and God called him, Moses made excuses. You know, the prophet Isaiah, when, when God called him, he, he said, but, but I'm a, a man of unclean lips. When God called Jonah, Jonah ran in, in the opposite direction. In the case of Mary, she was willing, but she thought God had surely made a mistake. She was willing, but she wasn't necessarily overcome with joy at, at the, the moment the, that the angel spoke to her or even when the, the angel left. But what Mary did or what Mary needed at that point was you know, 
she, she needed a friend. Mary needed someone to help her to see what God could see. Mary needed someone to reflect to, to her why it is that God had chosen her or why God would chose, choose her. And, and when Mary arrived in, in Elizabeth's home, she found that Elizabeth was six months pregnant, just like the angel had told her. And when Elizabeth greeted Mary, you know, Elizabeth said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you are going to bear. It was Elizabeth, not the, the angel that was, was telling Mary, do you see what I see? It was Elizabeth who was saying in, in her own way, do you see what God sees? I see what God sees in you. Do, do you see what God sees? Elizabeth knew that Mary was blessed by God, and Elizabeth helped Mary to, to see that. Do you have someone in your life that can help you see what God sees in you? Do you have someone in your life that, that can be an encouragement? Do you have an Elizabeth in your life? Maybe they encourage you. Maybe they, they help you to see the, uh, the gifts that, that you have that, that God has, has given to you. Maybe there's someone who, who helps you or or helps you to have greater confidence and, and courage. Maybe they help you to, to have greater faith and, and trust in God. I remember a, a time in my life when, when I was struggle, uh, struggling. I had, I had experienced some, some major um, emotional trauma and, and grief. Actually, not, not uh, vastly different from the, the things that we've talked about earlier in the, the service today. And, and I was just struggling to, to figure out how to get through it. And, and I had a friend, Stan, that, that came alongside of me. You know, Stan listened. You know, he didn't give me any easy or, or pat answers. He didn't figure out all the, all the whys of the struggles that I was going through, but he just walked there with me. And it was because of Stan's encouragement, it was because of his listening ear that, that he helped me through a a very difficult time in, in my life. We all need to have a person in our life who, who can help us to see who we truly are in Christ, to help us to keep focus even, even when the way seems dark. Just as we need someone to, to mirror God's truth in, in our life, there are others that, that we need to come around and be a mirror for them to be an encouragement, for, to help them to, to see what it is that God may be doing in them and, and through them. You know, Mary was humble. She wasn't, she wasn't full of herself. It wasn't after she talked with, with uh, Elizabeth, it, it wasn't an issue of, oh, look at me, I, aren't, aren't I great? No, I believe Mary was, was still very humble. These, these are not words that, that Mary in, intended to, to, um, to build herself or exalt herself, but, but they were words of praise and adoration and worship that, that she was directing in God's ways. As we look at this morning's scripture, it says, Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he's been mindful of my humble of the humble estate of, of his servant. <clears throat> From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his, his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in, in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from, from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but but has sent the rich, the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to, to our fathers. Mary said, For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Mary's not glorifying herself, but she's acknowledging that, that God has done great things. Now, God has chosen to do great things through her, and she was, she was willing. God 
can do great things in, in our lives, even when our lives are upended. Even when we're, we're living in chaos, God can, can still use us. Mary needed a, Elizabeth's encouragement to, to help her bring things into focus in her life. As people of faith, we need each other. In times of darkness, in times of doubt, in, in times of despair, we, we need to lean on one another. I believe God is asking us a question this morning. Do you see what I see? I see people who have the ability to, to make, the, make the great light of Christ known to the world. I believe God says, I, I see people that can take this light and, and can shine it into to dark and, and hurting places and places of despair. Mary didn't have it all figured out, you know, but, but she was willing. She was willing to take a step of faith, even though everything was not clear to her. And I guess I would ask you that same question today. Are you willing? Are you, be, are you willing to be used by God to come around someone else and, and give them encouragement? Are you willing to be used by God in, in such a way, even though you don't have it all figured out? Even though you don't know all the answers, you're willing to take one step of faith at a time. Let us pray. Maybe more than ever in this day, Lord, we confess that we don't have it all figured out. And yet in our struggles, we're willing to take a step of faith. And so, Lord, for each one in this sanctuary today, I, I pray that you would help them to just take a step of faith, to come alongside side someone to, to encourage them to, uh, to reflect your, your love and your grace in their lives, or to come along some, someone who can help them to bring life into focus. Lord, help us to take a step of faith, even in the face of confusion. Through Christ our Lord we pray.